Hi, welcome to Infimax. In this video, we're going to discuss two examples of the use of logic quantifiers, namely the existential quantifier and the universal quantifier in deduction using flags. Now, before we continue, please subscribe, click the bell, like, share, and put your nice comments below. Example 1. Prove that the following is a logical implication. Note for some x element of S, Px, implies for all y element of S, not Py. So, this is an implication which consists of the premise on the left, indicated with yellow, and the conclusion on the right, indicated with blue. So that is what we are going to prove, and here is the proof. So our goal is what we are going to prove. So as mentioned before, this is in the form of an implication the left one is the premise, and the right one is the conclusion. Now, to make this happen, we introduce a rectangular flag, and we put the premise in the flag. We indicate it with 1, and we try to get the conclusion under the flag. Now look at the conclusion. It is in the form of a universal quantifier. To get this, we introduce a pointed flag. Then we put the domain section, that is y element of s, in the flag. We indicate it with 2. Then we try to get not py under the flag. So now how do we get not py? Now to get it, we introduce a rectangular flag, put py in the flag, indicate it with 3, and we try to get false under the flag. So how do we get false? Well, we have not in 1. So if we can get for some x element of s, x then we can get false and yes we have it because we have y element of s in 2 and py in 3 and so we can apply the introduction of existential quantifier to 2 and 3 and so we have for some x element of s px we indicate this with 4 now we get false by applying the inverse to 1 and 4. We indicate this with 5. So now we can conclude not py, and that is by applying the introduction of not to 3 and 5. We indicate this with 6. Then now we have for all y element of s, not py. And that is by applying the introduction of universal quantifier to 2 and 6. We indicate this with 7. Then now we arrive to our destination. And that is by applying the introduction of implication to 1 and 7. And now we are done. Example 2. Prove that for some x element of S, Px and Qx implies for some y element of S, Py. 
So this is an implication consisting of the premise in the left, indicated with yellow, and the conclusion on the right, indicated with blue. So that is what we are going to prove, and here is the proof. So our destination is what we are going to prove, and that is an implication consisting of the premise on the left, and the conclusion on the right. Now to make this happen, we introduce a rectangular flag, put the premise in the flag, We indicate this with one and try to get the conclusion under the flag. Now the conclusion is in the form of an existential quantifier. So there are three possibilities to get this. The first one is by using the introduction of existential quantifier. If we have y element of s and py, then we get the conclusion. The second possibility is by using the alternative introduction of existential quantifier. That is by having in the flag for all x element of s not be x and try to get false. The third possibility is by using the alternative elimination of existential quantifier. Here we try to get for all x element of s, px and qx imply for some y element of s, py. So that together with 1, we conclude our conclusion. We can do this third possibility. Notice that here we have px and qx, the same as in 1, and that implies our conclusion. Also notice that the universal quantifier here is over the whole implication. Now to get this universal quantifier, we introduce a pointed flag and put x element of s there. We indicate this with 2 and try to get px and qx implies for some y element of s, py. So this is an implication. To get this, we put px and qx in the flag, indicate it with 3, and try to get for some y element of s, py. Now we get px from 3, that is by elimination of n from 3. We indicate it with 4. Now we get for some y element of s, p, y by introducing the existential quantifier to 2 and 4. We indicate it with 5. Now we establish px and qx implies for some y element of s, py. And it is by using the introduction of implication to 3 and 5. We indicate this with 6. Now we have for all x element of s, px and qx implies for some y element of s, py. And it is by applying the introduction of universal quantifier to 2 and 6. We indicate this with 7. Now we have for some y element of s, py. And it is by applying the alternative elimination of existential quantifier to 1 and 7. We indicate this with 8. Then finally we arrive to our destination. That is what we are going to prove. And we get this by using 
the introduction of implication to one and a. So we are done now.